Um, okay, so hi everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar. Uh, meet Roman. Um, he is kind of like a Texo expert. From the day we launched Texo, Roman has been using Texo since day one. And um, um, I can name people who I know from the beginning. And Roman is one of the you know, top person who I know since the beginning who has been using Texo. And he tried all the tools in the market. But and he shares all like comparisons, thoughts, and suggestions, every single thing. But he's he's like the only person I I, I would say I know that who is like, who has like ticked to text off from the beginning till now, you know. Um. So Roman has been uh, in our flag. He helps us in like all the testing, figuring figuring out how to make our recipes better. Um. Roman has been also involved in a lot of things that we are developing in V2. So I would say like Roman is like text off master, and today he's going to show you um couple of recipes that he, he, he has and uh, how you can build recipes, how to test recipes, how to launch recipes. And at the end, we can also talk about, you know, what things Roman does for his clients and how he makes some money. So um, maybe, yeah, that will be the end part, but I'll hand over to Roman you. And by the way, one more like notice, since Roman is, is sitting in Ukraine right now, and as we all know, uh, there is some country going on. Um, and if you hear any no noises, please uh, bear, bear that with, with us. Um, so. Roman, feel free. Now it's your turn. I'll leave. I'll leave this to you now. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, that's true. I've been using Textile for I don't know, maybe three plus years or so, and lots of things has been done to make it perfect so that you could use it and benefit. That's true. I used all the platforms that now exist on the web, and I haven't found anything that is. That gives you enough freedom to create whatever fits in your head or whatever you want to to I don't know to create or just make it unique. So Texel, in my opinion, gives you the best, best, best freedom. Uh, about the use cases. So um, I thought I've been thinking about what to tell you today, and um, mm, then like I'm gonna kind of sharing all my experience. I'm gonna be completely transparent with you. And this is the typical flow or a typical communication with the client that I have. And uh, it always starts from, do you have a list of leads? Because if you do have a list of leads, you have a spreadsheet, which means that you can use it as your lead input. And depending what kind of variables you have in your spreadsheet, then you can think of a recipe or the way you want to build it. Um, if you don't have it, of course, you can scrape it or you can get it dynamically, directly uh, by scraping it uh, from LinkedIn or any other source. So we're going to cover all the cases uh, after I, I finish with this uh, intro. And then I'm going to share my screen and we will try to build um, the recipe together. And I'm going to explain every step, why I built it like that, how can you perfect it, or how can you, you how, how can you do, build it even better? So, like I said, uh, option A, you have a lead list. Option B, you don't have. Option C, you have some kind of data and you even want to enrich it. So let's maybe do this. I will now share my screen. Make me a host, please. And by the way, I'm gonna build a recipe that I probably use most of the time. Okay. Yes, I can share my screen. So, this screen, share. So, So now, guys, like we are building a new recipe, and um, this is all happening live. This is it, this is not recorded, so you are going to see all things live here. Uh, so Roman is going to build a recipe. Roman, can you give a quick like overview of what we are building today? Um, so in this in this one in this use case, well, I'm going to explain it step by step. I don't want to give okay. you like a full picture, but I want to to give you a logical um, continuation of everything that I built. Yeah, like, I like webinars, sense. but I, I hate webinars when people are just talking. So I, I decided that yeah. you have to see it. Bear in good. mind, That's everyone, good. bear in mind, when you build a recipe, think before you build something. Go to a spice page. Uh, click on the social platform that you want to use. 
don't build crazy things where you try to, I don't know, combine YouTube and LinkedIn and Quora and Medium all together because that won't work. And if something doesn't work, then you write the support. Support is super busy. Please, please do it correct. Do it correct. Because if you do it correctly, everybody is happy. So, uh, number one, we need to scrape some data. Let's say we are lazy. We don't, we, don't, we don't have a list. We are just lazy. Where can I get my data from? I can get it from sales navigator search results or account search results. And the difference is that if I do lead search results, I can I will scrape people and they I will try to communicate with them. With them, I can also do account search results and okay. scrape companies if I want to do account based lead generation scraping or whatever it is you name. It. In this case, now I'm gonna type uh, lead. And we will, we need scrape LinkedIn sales navigator lead search results. If you don't know what this is, so I hope that all of you, you know, um, this is sales navigator. We have the option to scrape leads or accounts. Accounts are companies, leads are people. Let's say I want to connect with, I don't know, CMO, chief marketing officer and CMO abbreviation from uh let it be united state company headcount let's say this now it will display me twelve thousand results but there is a small mistake here and the mistake is uh, made by linkedin because the deeper you go to your research results let's say page like 8 10 25 etc etc the more blurrier your search become. For example, managing director, no, CMO is the good one. Can I see that page? If you scroll deeper to the search results, you will definitely find something weird, but we cannot find it now before the webinar. Oh, managing, no, CMO. Nevertheless, what I wanted to tell you is that every time in job titles, uh, you Boolean search, something that looks like this, like this. Mm. I'm gonna even copy this and paste here in the chat so that everyone can have it. Basically what this is, it's a search where I'm just typing who I want to display and who do I want to exclude. I yeah so <clears throat> just to just to add one one line here like guys um i think we have a guide on our blog where we have written like all the boolean search and like if or not all those things how you can you know, mix things to find the targeted persona it's very very handy and it's very useful um so uh roman just shared uh this uh text with you guys that you can use so make sure to like add or not and all those things and if you add double quote linkedin will make sure that you know it, it won't show you the titles which are matching right so this is very, very useful. Make sure to use this Boolean search in your LinkedIn sales of your filters. It will give you a very targeted persona. Go ahead, uh, Roman. Yeah, for example, I just remember I had a case where a client, uh, like a young startup owner, she wanted to connect with uh, people from the food and safety industry. And then I try, I wanted to find the people and I couldn't. And then I realized why don't I use like a job title. Uh, searching. What I did is I typed here like food safety, put it into a quote, and then I wanted to connect also like this manager, you know, like um, director and other people. Let's mm. even type director or manager. Oh, and voila, you have food safety quality manager. Right. And that actually worked very good for her. And I remember that. First time I launched her recipe, like after 30 minutes or so, she booked the call. That's cool. So also yeah. the success of any any of your campaign, I would say that 45 to 50 percent of its success lies on the uh, lead list or lead search. Result. Right. Yeah. The more filters you add in your lead search, the better results you get. Right. You don't want to like. It is just like. 
keep filtering the same thing until you refine it to the purity and you'll find the list of like 100 or 200 or 500 leads who can be your targeted persona and you want to like reach out to them, you know? So use these Boolean operators, use include and exclude functions to find the right persona and then go ahead and build your recipe. A lot of people do these mistakes. They'll try to like find title and in the whole US. That is again not going to work. Title and then write include what what should be the exact title match, where should be the uh, where should what should be the location, what should it be included, what should be excluded, and all those things. These are all available in the Sales Navigator. So if you have Sales Navigator, go and use these operators. These are very very handy. Okay, go ahead, Rom. So once let's say we have the search result, uh, this is the URL. You simply just copy it. Go back to your recipe and type your search URL. Now, once it's here, I like, Texo is asking me how many profiles do you want to scrape? Because it's recipe, I can like, I need to define the number. I'm gonna put 25 right now and I'm gonna explain it later on, what does it mean? Also, I recommend you to name your uh, recipes while, while you build them. It will give you, um, a good view of what you have built. So for example, here, I know that I'm scraping 25 LinkedIn sales navigator at and profile, just like that. Next step, once I scrape my profile, I you should know what do you get. And a quick hint would be if you can add any, any type of spice. And if you click insert here variable, it will always display you the very last step, which is scrape 25 results, because I just renamed it. And it will give you what you actually are scraping. Now, bear in mind, it would be great if Texo team put in V2 and even in V1, re-update the, the position of this variable, because most of the people will be taking this profile URL. But since we copied the sales navigator profile, lead search result, we are scraping this profile. And it's very important because later on down the funnel, there will be spices that do not work with regular profile, but want, want you want, but, but only want for the as an input sales navigator profile. So again, every time you build something, check what you are building and make sure that it's, that it's correct. Select correct spices. This yeah, will eliminate so, all the error. Yeah, Roman, you you said it very correctly. Um, and thanks our team. The here's your feedback. Um, one thing that I would mention here. Um, uh, I know that like our team will will, will be uh, slightly mad at me for sharing the things about V2, but um, this mapping thing won't be required in in new version. It will be automatically mapped. So just click add automation. Click add next automation the input and out output will be automatically matched in V2. So you don't have to like even click on this and you know find the right output that needs to be matched with the previous input and all that. This will be all handled inside the Excel. Yep. Go ahead. Now, uh, remember that probably two years ago or something like this in February, LinkedIn released an update that uh, um, decreased the number of connection requests you can send uh, on a weekly basis. While everybody was screaming, uh, deciding what to do, I've been thinking, what can I actually do to do to to kind of do a less emphasis on the connection request because I know it's limited, but at the same time process uh, more people per day. So it got me thinking, well, what can I add or do as a step, like kind of about the connection request? Um, I can add email. What does email mean? So let's firstly add it. And just gonna explain it down the road. What do you mean? I'm gonna type here in my email. Send email using sales navigator, blah 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 blah. So I'm gonna explain this blah 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 blah. What does it mean? Every time you scrape some data from here, you need to input some data here. Here it's a probably UX problem. But for emails, it would be great if here it would say sales navigator profile URL. Because this spice only works with sales navigator profile. It doesn't want to work 
with regular profiles unless you add here a step to convert the regular to, to sales navigator profile URL. But it will consume more of your time. You don't want it to happen. So in our case, I click here and the regular user would, would probably select this because it says LinkedIn profile URL, profile URL. Kind of makes sense, but no, it has to be sales navigator profile URL. Now it will work, definitely. When you add a uh, message messages to, to to the to the spice, make sure you add a subject line because if you forget to add this and launch the the recipe, it will throw you an error later on. So make sure you always have. It. So let's say it will be something like I don't know information, or typically I could go here, insert my variable and type first name. And after that, last name. First name, let's say Roman Stoya. I don't recommend doing this way because if you go, let's say my LinkedIn page, you will notice that I have here this my first name, which is just a simple first name field, and I have here this tiny uh, dot here which means that Texo will actually scrape the first name field and the second one. And whenever I get a connection request or, or anything, it will be, it will display here like information for Roman dot space Stoya. And I know it's automated. So for this reason, Texo has these personalized variables, first name, space, last name. If you use these variables, it will clean those from these icons, sunnies, and all the garbage that people post in their first name, last name. Do it like this. Then goes the message. The message, it could be anything like, hi, again, first name, and then go some status. Do not ever add inside this email message a signature no signature do not add it because linkedin did this for you by default right and if you add here something like best roman you will duplicate your email and you, in your email you will duplicate your signature and, and the, the the prospect will get this message plus the default signature so important yeah, and yeah. That, that that looks stupid. Yeah. How can you edit your or how can you I don't know? Can I get my signature for it? Simple. You go to the messaging and here you go. It's here. This is the default signature. And if you don't add it, it will be again this best common ta, 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 ta. that would look stupid. Don't do this. Right. Now once we have this, we know that there is no need for reply detection here because this is our kind of first cold message to a lead. So we don't need to, to check this. And this is the very important uh, rule, which allows me to send emails for free to other premium open to emails profiles. Now, what does it mean? Let's go back to our search results and exclude this and include this stuff. So as you can see, we have these premium icons. Martin, Eric, and by the way, you see Martin CJ and it has MBA, MA, MCFE. Texel cleans this stuff. It will be just Martin and probably CJ Mongiello. So if I open Martin Eric's profiles, I want to see this. It's a premium feature that allows anyone on LinkedIn to contact you directly for free, even if they are not connected with you. Second degree, third level degree, anyone, anyone who is free. So if I go to Eric, it's open as well. There are cases when the, pro when the person is premium and disable this flag on his right. profile because any, any profile is by default open. So, 
Yeah, okay. this this is like a good way to like save our credits, right? The total credits that we get. Yeah. So if we check this box, uh, you know, we will send the email emails to like people who have who are like accepting emails, um, and it won't cost you credit, which is quite nice. Yeah. So for example, this guy is not premium, but let's assume that he is premium, not open. Uh, if I click a message, it will eat one of my credits. Hmm. For the other guy, it's for free. Yeah. So come on. This is like so I good. Do? For like a free opportunity. Yeah. Now, why do I like to use emails? Because every time somebody receives an email, he will get a LinkedIn notification in their regular UI here. And for example, this is the this is the this is the email, and it even shows you this 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 that's an email. Moreover. I got the same email notification on the uh, email address address that I used to log into my LinkedIn account, which means that I I always check my uh, inbox every day, and it would be it, 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 it's kind of a double notification for 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 a lead. There is no way he is not or he she are not checking their uh, inboxes every day, so they will definitely see. Mm -hmm. That's why I use email. Now, of course, while we are building this, uh, we need to distinguish premium and not premium users. So for this reason, Texo has designed this routing. The, the thing that I like most about Texo, hello Armand. So in here, I'm gonna type a description, but you can leave it empty. Um, you can type here, I don't know, like um, email to open for files. Now we need to compare something in order to make this happen. There are four there are compare four compare keys: profile, subject, send message, and open profile. We are now comparing the open profile. In in a pure logic, it sounds like Texo kind of visits this person, clicks on this page, and then from here, it checks if the profile is open or not. So now we need to compare key open condition true. So if he's open and that's true, then what do I want to do? Obviously, there are many steps, but now I'm going to type, I'm, I'm going to just select a delay. And another way, I'm gonna type a connection request. Send a LinkedIn connection request. I don't use this one, despite knowing that I scraped sales navigator uh, URLs from the sales navigator list of results. I always use the regular connection request. Voila, I have this. Now, what does it mean? I'm gonna put here four days. Delay or select days. Otherwise, it will be just a LinkedIn connection request. I'm going to even type here to regular because I know that this is not the sales navigator connection request twice. Now, let's assume I scrape 20. No, let's not assume, but let's take a look at this one. So every, every Sales Navigator page here consists of 25 leads. How many premium do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A lot, like a lot. Uh, once 25 people have been scraped, it will check out of all of these 25 who is premium. Let's pretend that 10 are premium. Hmm. 10 guys will receive my subject line and my message. Right. They will go here and they will be waiting for four days. Additionally, they will get uh, email notification from LinkedIn that Roman uh, emailed them. Right. 25 minus 10 emailed premium people equals 15. Now they go to a, now 15 leads go to a uh, regular LinkedIn connection request spice. So today, or well, let's say now, we are sending 15, and it's important. The reason why I added here a regular connection request is because I know through my experience that even if I select here 
a profile from my previous tab, from my email tab, this one, profile URL. I know that I'm taking a sales navigator profile here and I'm kind of adding it to the connection request. It will auto convert to a premium file, to a premium uh, profile URL. But if I select here a different file, which is the send a sales, a, um, a sales navigator connection request, it works only with sales navigator profile URL. So if like just use this one, every time it will work. Believe me. Now. Yeah. So like. The, the way you are doing is basically like pulling 35 profiles, sending them emails like all the open profiles. And if like open is true, then like go to go for like wait for four days. And if open is not true, then like send them regular connection request. Or if they don't have premium, then send them regular connection request. Right. Yeah. Uh, now, nice. the reason why I put here 15 and 10, again, 25 here, 10, premium 15 here. You all know that uh, LinkedIn allows you to send 100 uh, connection requests uh, a week. So it's 20 a day, right. right? Right. If you use Sales Navigator subscription, you can increase it to 35, which means that, you see, I can increase this number. I can increase Kraken's number to 45. Again, it depends on the lead list, on how many right. premium guys, guys you have here. As you can see, I have a lot. Can I create more people? Yes. Why? Because they will go to the email set. And the reason why I like this flow is because it's almost impossible to predict on the number of connection requests you send per day, which makes you less or even more secure to be detected by LinkedIn, I don't know, security bots or whatsoever. Why? Uh, there are many LinkedIn automation platforms where they ask you, they have a field, how many connection requests you want to send per day? And you must put there 20. Every day it will be 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. You are like robot. This approach, if you scrape, let's say 25 or 35, it will be different. Today, 17, tomorrow, 25. The day after tomorrow, tomorrow 35. That's better right. for you. Right, so it's like very, very random results, right? You always get random results. That's why yep. the, even the connection requests are random. Nice. Correct. Once you scrape this and that, um, in here we can play our regular LinkedIn game, which is the put a delay. Let's say a delay like a five day. <clears throat> and then we have our check if connect. Here, we want to check who out of these 15 people within five days have accepted my connection request or not. Check if, of course, I need to feed it with some data. It will be a profile URL taken from this last step, profile URL. Am I a premium user? Yes. Routing. I need to do something with those who didn't connect. What can I do? Okay, like we can leave it even at. You can even uh, recache. I never, I, I use this in the past, but you can even delete this because it's, I don't know, there is no use. Okay. Compare key. What we are actually comparing here, connected or pending? We, we are checking the status. Connected. True. If recache accepted my connection request, we are now connected, then. What do I want to do? I can send him, like I can do a lot of stuff, but most commonly I want to message him. I want to send him some spam. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise, there are lots of things you can do. But I'm gonna on purpose add here a delay. Voila. So in here, this will be my one kind of my first follow up. Of course, I need to add here from the last step profile URL. 
And really, it would be great if all of these default uh, things that, that you use mo most of the time will be here uh, at the top of your selectors. 100%. That will be like a little bit more comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, now we are adding reply detections uh, because it might happen that Vicky accepted my connection request on the very next day after 50 minutes, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't want him to receive my LinkedIn message one because it doesn't make sense. But also uh, there were use cases when you want to do this. I'm gonna explain you a, a quick trick. Uh, one of the companies I built a funnel where uh, in order to increase the, uh, the reply rate uh, from here, like the use case was to connect with sales guys and uh, the connection request message we used was, can I ask you something? Mm. It doesn't feel like you are selling something or anything. And everybody was replying like, yeah, sure. What do you want? We knew that we will have like, I don't know, 95% acceptance rate. And for that reason, we didn't add a reply detection here. And, and now we are friends on LinkedIn. They didn't ignore us. And here, like we, we, we now have a, um, a possibility to add more than 300 characters in our message because all of mm. you know that here we have 300 characters by the way here i forgot to uh, check that i'm a premium user so again uh reply detection is a must uh yes i'm a premium user uh do you want to send only to connected profiles sometimes it happens that i can reply to a person without accepting their connection request i always use this if they didn't accept my connection request, that's their choice. But I want to communicate with those who we are now friends. friends. Yeah. Let's let's just um, go over the from the top to bottom again, just so you know people understand what we are doing. So we are pulling um, around twenty five to forty five test parameters like leads using all the filters that we discussed, like all the boolean operators, and then um, we are sending them in mails. And those who have opened their profile, they will receive the emails. Those who are not premium account, those who have not opened their profile, they will receive normal connection request. We are going to wait for five days and check if they are connected or not. If they are connected, we will send them a message. If they are not connected, we can send them. We will just keep a delay for some, some time. So by looking at text or recipe, you can easily check the whole flow. You know, so it's it's very easy to read. And in B two, it is going to be way easier for you to read and understand. Um, I do understand this can get a little bit complicated, so we are not going to get to do another branching here just to make things look easy for you guys. It's but simple like, stuff. It's not complicated. Simple. Yeah, it's Very not complicated simple. at all. Um, and I'll, I'll share the new recipe library that is coming out in, in a week or so. Uh, you will see all these recipes pre-built for you guys. But yeah, just read from the top to bottom. You'll be able to understand what is really going on. Okay? Go ahead, Roman. Now, the reason why I add here a week delay is because could it happen that Vicky didn't accept my connection request? Of course. So what can I add here? I can add additional check if connected. Can I? I can. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't recommend doing it because like, I, I don't want to know over complicate this. <laughs> I knew we would have said this. So uh, check if connected. I'm gonna select the profile URL from here and here. And of course I need to add the routing. Let, let me do it quickly. I'm going to explain just the use case. Again, it's all about the freedom that Texel gives you. You can do it or you cannot. It depends on you. If you, so let's name it uh, the stage one. Oh, I'm sorry, here I'm going to. In my stuff. Can I? Yes, I can. What's this approach? So, if you're targeting, let's say, the food safety industry people, you don't know like whether they are active or not, or like, right. you know, like the dentist or something like this. So, you need to manipulate with delays. But maybe in your first LinkedIn message, you have inserted here, I don't know, a video, like a long video or whatever it is. And you don't know whether or not people will click on this um, video. Maybe they're afraid, I don't know, security issues, whatever. 
and in here you added like a quarter. This way you can analyze who, like which message, which message works better for you. Can you do right. that? Yes, you can. Again, depends on your use case. But still, the more branching you add, the more complicated your flow, is, like your recipe is, the harder it is to maintain it. So keep it simple. But if you want, do some crazy stuff. So let me delete this. This, that, and add here. Let it be a little like, or let it be, I don't know, 10. 10. What can you do with the person that didn't accept your connection request? You can, you have the option to, a typical world, you can, how do you call it, remover. I delete the way I see it. Um, we should have an option where, you know, we can pass this um, data to any other recipe. So the way it, it should be like this. One moment, my friend, everything will, will be there. One moment. Okay. <laughs> So um, you can add here a spice to remove a pending connection request. You can. Why do you need to do this? Because you need to maintain the number of pending connection requests of connection requests you sent, um, one month older connection. Like you, you, you need to maintain this limit to what do people say? Like thousand, thousand two hundred, something like this. Hmm. So if the person like didn't add, it didn't. Um, actually, again, it depends on what did you wrote in the connection request message. So if there is something valuable here, I don't know, maybe a video or something like this, uh, maybe you would want to, to sit this video for longer and add here really a week delay. And if that lead didn't, uh, within two weeks, like 15 days delay, didn't open it, then remove this connection request. Like it doesn't make sense, not interesting. But uh, what you can do is before removing this connection request, you can add, let's say, a Google Sheet and send some data to it, which will be like we will add the column, it will be the same profile URL. And you can name this, let's say, retarget. What would this mean? When a lead goes here, you will already know by your recipe that he didn't accept your connection request which means for you that whenever you open this google sheet you will see people that ignored you which means that you can go to the company where this lead currently works at find a different person there write a personalized connection request and said i tried to connect with uh, Vikesh. i sent him this video or a connection request 15 days ago he didn't uh, accept is there any chance i can talk with you something like this now yeah so this is good so like basically you are basically pulling all the people who have not connected to a google sheet and then you will remove the connection um so you can utilize the data of people who have not connected in some other workflow right so yeah this definitely makes sense again think what you are building think what what you want to achieve from from this recipe like it could be very dynamic very smart just think 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 again i don't want to remove this connection request I want to still be able to connect with Vikesh. What can I do? I will go here and select scrape. I want to scrape his uh, LinkedIn profile, this one. Scrape a LinkedIn profile. I'm going to even add here, scrape a regular LinkedIn. And the reason why I typed here a word regular is because Remember here we had sales navigator URL, sales navigator URLs, regular URL, URL, regular. So we are working with regular LinkedIn URL. Now I want to add profile URL. Yes, I'm in premium. By scraping his profile, I now have his first name, last name, and I need just a website or a domain in order to find his business email and then email him. What can I do? I always use a company profile, uh, a script LinkedIn company page. 
why do I do this? Because if I check, like the simple answer is that uh, all websites are always on the company page yeah. UI. This is the website. Once I right. have the website, actually I need to select here a company URL. I'm scraping the profile and now I need job company URL. This one. Now, I have three variables that I want to connect because I want to find the email address because I have the first name, scraper regular LinkedIn profile, first name, voila, last name, voila, domain, oops, domain, I have it here. I have two variables, domain and the website. It doesn't matter what you select, both work. So UX suggestion, you can remove this, just right. the website and rename it to website. Again, I can select website, it will work. I can select domain, it will work. Domain. Now, I have a business, find a B2B email. Now, all of you probably know email have different suffixes, valid, not valid, catch all, et cetera, et cetera. I've been using this five and uh, I compare this with other platforms like Snowyo and Drop Contact and Hunter, et cetera, et cetera. Inside Textile Spice email finder, email verifier work really good, believe me. Really. Yeah, we have one of the one of the best uh, email finder rates um, in the market. It can easily be compared with like any other tool, um, top ones even. So, uh, I mean, our team is already continuously working on finding it, making it more better. Um, so guys, just so you guys know the whole flow, now that like Roman has connection re uh, request, pulling all the leads, sending them in mail, if they are not open, sending them connection request, normal connection request, waiting for some time. And if they are not accepting connection request, sending that data to Google Sheet, and then uh, removing that connection request, finding their, their email. And now I think the last step is going to be like, once we have the email, maybe send that to a lead on reply or lamb list or neither tool or maybe send it to a Google Sheet. That should complete our workflow. Go ahead, um, Roman. Yes. So um, again, find email, very, like you need to verify the email. You don't want to send uh, bad emails because they will be bound. So in here, I need to select email ID. And in here, I always add this one, plus filter. I always like to rename these things because once I close this or I go for a coffee and then I go back to my recipe, I know that I added here filter. It's easier for me. In my filter, I will compare the email status, verify, condition, true. It means that only valid emails will go through the email verifier step, which means that later, if I add Lemlist, Reply, other platform, etc., only valid emails will go to my add list, uh, to my reply IO file. How to do this? Very simple. Uh, you need to add here a uh, reply or API key. I already have it in my global variables. Campaign ID. I have lots of campaigns. Lead email from the last step. This one, because it's verified. Only verified emails will go there. And then you have the first name, last name, and other stuff. First name. By the way, a, 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 another suggestion to you, Vicky. Remember that. Uh, if I click, for example, on this file and I want to add a message, I have a this text here, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that this first name is different from, from that one because it's clean from these uh, I, like right. icons and other stuff. Why don't you add this change in here? So mm -hmm. it's the same first name and I want right. to make it clean. Is it yeah, not to your point. Very, very efficient. So create a LinkedIn profile, a regular profile, first name, Company name, uh, 
it's my company name it's the company page here name now uh probably we'll do maybe a, a different webinar or maybe now like you can add a, a, a custom field as well. yeah you can add like terms of custom fields a lot of people use it uh you can add like name description and all those things it's super super handy right how to do this you go to like you first need to know the api documentation because um there has to be uh, an equal uh, variable between both apps so that if you type here first name and the first is the capital letter exactly the same should be in the second platform otherwise that will not work so in this specific case i have here i don't know but i i, I can just ice break it's just an example copy back pop add yeah and now if i have this something i can add here blah blah blah, blah, blah. now uh long story short i'm scraping leads i am emailing premium users i'm doing my regular linkedin stuff uh, with them i'm checking they're connected if yes it's a uh, uh send linkedin message delay send linkedin message delay etc etc but uh the tiny difference between a person that you are already connected with and not is that when you are friends with somebody you have their contact info which means that uh let's say you add here again like uh, days or something days Let's add a second step. Again, message. Yes. Second LinkedIn message. But I'm not gonna select uh, in the spice itself, but you should uh, select it. No, I will do this. Let's do it correctly. Profile URL. Yes, it's by detection. You want to check the previous message and if i even if i hover over it you will see that this uh, variable was taken from lee message one video from this spice nice yes i'm premium yes i am connected now it happens that you send them a message once twice they didn't uh, accept it then uh, you can add a delay or maybe not or i don't know Let, let's add 30 minutes you want to send the second message and at the same time you want to email them 30 minutes oh. and now we will scrape the same profile as well yeah roman i think you should need to take just uh, this maybe that's like your last note i don't want you to you know um this i mean like this over from the top this may seem complicated to a lot of people in the in the, in, in the audience but once you start reading each note and think of like how it is being processed, everything is super easy. And I can definitely understand that like UI UX is bit, bit you can from the from the eyes it can seem complicated, but definitely it's not. Uh, we have seen a couple of like more advanced flow where like 20, 30 steps, um, and people have people are running it. Uh, but yeah, once you start building these automations, you will be easily able to you know grasp and see what what really going on. So uh, let me now explain you the difference between connected and not connected people. Rodrigo, we connected recently. And in here, I should be able, like this is the business email, but if I, if I click on, come on, say, oh, Sophia. Gmail, it's her personal email. That's how I can get this because we are friends. I now her, have her contact info. And again, depends on the use case. Maybe it's not professional to use their personal email and send them something. Again, think what you do because people may, may mark you as spam. You don't want it to happen. Think. So once I scrape the profile here, I should be able to find the desired email. Well, yeah. And again, because they added your email, email verifier. Like, I know that all the email, all the personal emails, they're valid, but it's better to always uh, 
verified filter. I'm comparing the status of the email if condition is true. And if yes, now I'm not going to add um, reply AO. I will add here a webhook. It makes it com complicated, but again, depending on the use case. Let's say you don't want to pay for Lamlist, reply AO, and other tools. Let's say you have Zapier, public connect. I, I have public connect. Now in here, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna build a simple workflow. There were, I remember the times when I was trying to figure out how to, how these workflows, how this webhook works, and there were no decent videos. So you will have now one on YouTube. So, uh, webinar, create. My first step will be a webhook because I need to catch something from Texel. I simply copy this, go here. This is the path. Now I need to send some data, which will be, of course, for first name. Create. So, Roman, like, what what are you going to do from Pabli? What will happen? We will you like Pabli is definitely cheaper than Lamlist and other stuff. Pabli is not um, doesn't have uh, the smart email automation functionality, but it's just a matter of I don't know saving money or a matter of um, because of this use case. Don't pitch people to personal emails. I may create here a webhook, send here this first name and email. And here use my personal Gmail account. Oh, to send emails? Yeah, not from the business email, but from my personal email. So oh, nice. Your, so, yeah. Maybe so you want to like find email and then send them like email from email from your personal uh, Gmail account. Okay. Yeah. The only reason between like if you use Reply Lamlist or any tool with this Gmail, if you use like, like in this approach, uh, this. Uh, this approach doesn't have a reply functionality. So mm. it would be stupid to add here, like here, a delay and then again, Gmail. Because yeah, so like one question that I have is like, uh, why do you, um, why, why do you choose to like send um, email from your personal email with, with no reply detection? Like, is there any, any reason for that? Um, currently, I just wanted to show you how to use webhooks. And for oh, example, okay. If, okay, if okay. You, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I thought or, like uh, you were, you know, yeah, or, good. or if you many times I happen to have uh, conversations where, where um, owners of companies say that I don't want to transition all my emailing efforts to a different platform because we are now using, say, you know, MailChimp. So, that yeah, so you can use Webhook do... to send data from Texas or to third party tools. Yeah, that's good. So basically, okay. the idea was to like use webhook to send data from uh, text out to a third party tool, depending on like filters and all those connections. I think this is this is going to be also helpful for people who are watching this. Um, so the way you see the filters, basically, you can create tons of segments on Mailchimp or like Reply or like any tool that you're using, and you will only push data from that like from all the branches and the filters, right? So this will make more your campaigns more segmented and more personalized. So um, very very handy. As you can see, I they have all also reply. So if it happens that if if Texo didn't have a native integration with reply, yo, you still can do it through the use of web. You can again think what you want to do. Do it. You can now. Yeah. Uh, let's go. Oh, by the way, um, probably six months ago, I stopped using spices like this one. I really been thinking, why do I need to use these? Like, um, I thought about it as every recipe needs to have a logical start and logical continuation. And uh, whenever a recipe, whenever um, a branch got to the very, very, very end of your spice, it had, um, like, it gives you a notification that kind of recipe is completed in the log. But I stopped using those, and um, maybe it's a question to you or Arman after the webinar. Like, is there any 
use case to, to use. Yeah, sometimes you want to like add, add an exit. Basically, you want to, you went to like all the possible options and there's like no other way to move forward. So you can simply exit the recipe there. That is one of the, I think that there are a couple of use cases that we want to solve. Mm. That's why we added like this option, you know, if there are no filters, no other chances to move forward, just execute the recipe then and there, you know? Yep. Now, uh, like, I, I suppose that everything is clear here, basically. Yeah, so let's, let's go over from the top to bottom and let's consider the whole, uh, cover the whole flow um, so you that people can, you know. You scrape people, you email premium open users. If yes, here will be like a email delay, email delay drip campaign, right? But on the second email, you, again, you select the profile from the previous step must be a subject line. Now it has to be a reply detection because it's the second one. And of course, to open profile. Here, again, we can add a delay. Scrape, yeah, you can add more stuff if you want to, yeah. Create sales navigator profiles, create sales navigator company your, uh, page, uh, find email, verify email, reply all, everything. Yeah, to so like all a, possible options, yeah. You have a drip LinkedIn email, uh, drip, uh, just link it in an email and if they didn't connect, email. So you kind of have the three ways yeah. to target any person. Yeah, so like basically just like, so guys, just visualize this. Pulling all the uh, leads from test navigators, sending them emails, if connected, send another email and say thank you for connecting and blah, blah, blah. So follow ups and all that. If not connected, save their profile, wait for some time and see if they're still connected. If not, send them an email, okay? Find that email, send them an email uh, on reply somewhere. If connected, then like send a series of follow-ups. This is the flow, that's it. If we The way we are building this is to like show you, you know, all the steps, all the things that you can do. But this, this is the only step. Pull all the leads from inmates, send inmates to all the people who have opened their profile, who are accepting, who are, who are premium. If they are connected, then send them another email. If they are not connected, they are like not accepting, they, are, they don't have premium, they don't have open profiles, send them correction requests. If they are connected, send a series of follow-ups. Not connected, send them to a, through a, the email route. That's all, right? This is just the flow. And we wanted to make it a bit you know, advanced just to show you all the possibilities. So we have webhook at the end. So you can use the webhook to send data to any tool on the on the web. Uh, if they, they have webhooks, they can collect data. We can send the data from TypeCloud to that tool. It can be Reply, it can be Remlis, it can be Fably, it can be Zapier, it can be Integromet, any other tool. We can pass data to that tool, and from there you can start another, you know, another flow from there. So this is the complete flow, and um, I think Roman has already a lot of uh, workflows which are working, and it, they are they are doing fine. So go ahead, Roman. Yeah, you can you can carry on now. Now also it is mega important to configure daily limit. Mega important. Why? Right. Because first of all, I'm a premium user. I like if I type here a connection. Your request. Send a sales navigator connection request. By default, it's 35. By default, here it's 20. I have edited the limit. I will reset it. It's 20. But since I'm a premium user, why not? And it's 35. And submit. In my funnel, I know that I'm I have a set called check if connected. If I use it twice. I can increase the limit. Again, mm. if you want to A-B test your message. Um, you, I have a five um, scrape company page. Company from me. In my experience, the maximum number I've been scraping without any cookie expire and other stuff was like 80 to 85. So mm. you can keep it 70 and don't worry about it. Yeah. Again, you have there are a lot of factors to this. I would say, like, again, so people who are watching this, um, there are a couple of lot of factors involved in like increasing the limit. So if you are totally new, if you don't think that you know you have been super active on LinkedIn, you are trying all these things for new, I would not recommend you to change the limits. Once you start making these automations more and more, once you start utilizing LinkedIn more and more, you can gradually increase the number. Yeah, but um, um yeah. While we are here, um, yeah. One recipe started do not blast like 45 right away start from one page 25 right 
like test your message, test your test your stuff, whether or not they reply or not. Um, warm up your LinkedIn profile. Like you haven't been active yesterday, two days ago, a week ago. Like start slowly, and then let's say it's been working for two weeks. All you need to do is just, and, and you want to increase the volume. You I don't know, change here forty, and now like it's been take twenty five. 25, 25, now 40. So you'll become more active. Active. That's important. Um, what else? Remember that I told you here for the email group campaign, uh, you have a spice to create a regular LinkedIn company page, and you can use it here as well. But because you have a different spice called Extract Sales Navigator Company Details, it has a different limit, daily limit. Which means that it's better to, when you build something, to take different spices to keep the daily limit kind of in the green zone, if you know what I mean. Do yeah. not overuse one spice because it may happen that um, your cookie will. Expire. Everything has a limit. Yeah. Yes. Everything. So, uh, everything uh, each action that you do on LinkedIn, uh, there's a limit. There's someone who's like watching you, trying to, you know, see if you are a bot or you are a human and what you are exactly trying to do. So um, if, if you see that some automation can be, you know, one, two things can be done in one, just use that. So can, you can re reduce the limit. One thing that I would add here is that like what you are seeing right now, to be honest, I, I, haven't I don't think this is possible. Yeah, I know. I, I, I just think like this is not possible on any other platform as far as I am, right? Um, no other platform can do this. You, with webhooks, with um, series of follow-ups, finding emails, and that, that will lead and all those things. Yeah, go ahead, Roman. Go ahead. Um, as you probably noticed, I haven't been using this field. And the reason why I don't do this is because connected to Roman Stoller. I don't need to add here every time my cookie. Right. Because I can do it once and for all. How to do it? Create here an account, Roman Stoller. Uh, once you select this account, the whole UI updates for this specific account. You go to Cookie Manager. Uh, if you haven't installed the extension, it will say like install the extension, something like this. Once installed, it it will appear here. Right. Simply you click Get Cookie, Save Cookie, and you wait for around fifteen seconds, and you will get two messages. Uh, successful message will say last updated today. Not successful message will highlight uh, with the yellow color something like invalid cookie. So. Let's wait a little bit more. And, and, oops, good. Yeah. Oops, successfully. Why do you want to use uh, Cookie Manager? Let's imagine that you mistakenly added, let's say here, or you forgot to add to update the session cookie. And uh, you updated it through the manager, but in here you had this previous cookie version. When it gets here, it will throw you an error because it uses this cookie. It's kind of prioritized this field over the cookie right. manager. Right. So if you're building recipes, your life will be easier if you use it through the cookie manager. Yeah, use cookie manager, um, save your, uh, connect your account, and then just keep it handy for like all your automation. You don't have to like, you know, drop your cookies again and again. Um, one thing someone just asked me about the account. So on the top, you see that like selected account, you can create a number of accounts to keep your different cookies separate, you know? So each account is like separate. And once you switch that account, all the spices, all the recipes will be, you know, hidden and it will only show for that specific account. It is very, very handy for managing your clients, managing your, um, if you're managing multiple accounts, you can use this feature to, for all your clients and for all your multi accounts. And by the way, the beauty of Texo is that compared to LinkedIn automation tools, uh, you pay here for the execution time, not for the fee. There are many right. tools that where you have to pay like hundred bucks to for, per per account. Uh, in my experience, I managed uh, sixty something um, LinkedIn profiles. That was like a spam spam bomb, but nevertheless, I could create here this army of uh, uh, people and uh, still. Keep the, the the budget. Wow, Roman, um, you need to pay me. <laughs> you <laughs> save a lot of money, man. 
Yeah, um, so, um, guys, now, how is this flow? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. Let me know. Let me know when you are done. I like tech, so, but I hate at the same time that while I'm building this stuff, there is no analytics. Vikesh, you promised me back in May. Me too. Me too. Wait for me too. <laughs> how to do it, guys? Uh, Google Sheets. Good old Google Sheets. You can add here a Google Sheet. Come on. Yep. Add it. I don't know. You name it. I don't know. Let's create. And you can record here the people that you trade. Here you can add like before the delay or after. You can add again a Google Sheet and data and name it, I don't know, first in mail. See what I yeah, mean? Yeah, basically like you use Google Sheet to like pass data from at each step. Um, I know that this this is again something which is which ideally should not be required. So um, we are going to solve this part as well in V2. So in V2, uh, recipe has like all the and it's it's not recipe now in V2 it's like workflows. In workflows, there's like metrics and analytics at each step. So you can easily visualize and see all the numbers, how everything is passing from each step to to another step. So very very handy. Um, it will be very. This handy is your in, in analytics, V2. in other words. And if you are a Google spreadsheet wizard. I don't know, message me maybe one day to tell me how you can dynamically build a dashboard that will consume data from email, connection requests, I don't know, friends on LinkedIn didn't accept your connection request at the very end, didn't reply, ta -ta 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 -ta. you will have one Google Sheet and you will have at least a picture of what has been done. Additionally, I don't know if you added this or not, but um, if I go to this spice, I'm interested in the connection request. Here you have this timestamp, a very full variable. So you can have like right. a LinkedIn profile URL, first name, last name, title, company name, and a timestamp. It will display when exactly did you send this connection request. Analytics. Yeah. Super but handy. Yeah. Super handy, but at the same time, not super handy for the email timestamp. Oh, Edit. okay. Super simple. Yeah. Adding but it, making a very note. required. And by the way, do we yeah. have it for the messages? We should do more webinars now. Uh, yeah, I think like webinar gear sort of like ideas. Stamp. You have it hmm. now. Uh, what else? Uh, to process on your results, let's say you, you, you click this, it will avoid contacting same. Account, same leads. Always use this for your own sake. Why? A simple case could be that half a year ago, you, you've you been targeting CMOs and you want to do this again, and you have some data um, in your recipe, and you don't want to contact them again, so it will filter out the, the duplicates. Moreover, um, moreover, what was the, the other thing? Uh, yeah, process is like very, very handy to make sure that you don't connect with people who who you okay. have been already like talking to since quite some time, or be you connected in the past and all those things. Uh, remember, I added here this uh, LinkedIn pending connection remover. If I'm not mistaken right. by LinkedIn rules, if you uh, remove uh, the pending connection request, you are not allowed. Oh, you cannot to... send them to like more than like I think like three weeks. It's like three weeks. You three cannot send maybe. that person uh, for. I, I can see like I see three weeks, but I don't know. Maybe that number has changed. But like it's generally three weeks. You cannot send. Um, oh, when you send a connection request, then like, if you cancel it, you cannot send it for another three weeks. But you can easily like say no, no, no to any connection that request you get. So yeah. By the way, I just happened to remember a very cool case. Uh, again, it's all about creativity. Think what you want to do. Let's say you are targeting these leads, you send the first email, you send the second email, uh, then you add a delay to give them some time to, to respond. They don't, don't do this. Then, again, creativity. If I type here a word employ, extract any company employees, what does it mean? Here, I've been, I don't know, scraping CMOs. Every CMO has a CEO above him. 
because I scraped the CMO, I have the company URL. Mm. I so can, you can find the right for people as, as well. I yeah. can find two people in one recipe. Mm. And then down the road, once I extracted, let's say, uh, and to your role, CEO, founder, blah, 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 blah. I can add here. Request. Can I? I can, but there's a problem. I'm having connection requests here, mm. which means I need to lower the scraping power. Yeah. But at the same time, I think again, like, uh, yeah, this Roman, I, I would say like you can you can take this this part and like in your in your next recipe because um I also do understand it can get very complicated at some point if you um you know if we keep adding stuff. But one thing to note here, I think we we should have one more like webinar where we we are, we only talk about you know managing recipes, how you connect one recipe to another, how you make sure that you know you create your recipe in such a way that they are more manageable. So um, five step in one, and then like after five steps, all the data is coming to your Google Sheet. From there, Google Sheet, it can be your next recipe, which is being triggered, right? So uh, that way you can easily manage your recipe and keep like five, six steps in one recipe, next one, five, six steps, and that way it, it will be very handy um, for you to like manage your whole workflow. Sorry for more no noise. I think this is some, some no, 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 it could be, again, think what you do, think what you want. It Could it be that they ignored your first, second email? Yes, of course, it could be. So why don't you record this data and use it for your second incident account or for your SDR or just for yourself so that you could, I don't know, have some days to follow up with them. I don't know, send them something personalized, blah, blah, blah. But already you did some kind of effort to connect with somebody within that team. So you can say something like, Mm, I don't know. Hi, Roman. I tried to connect with uh, Vicky a long time ago. She didn't have time. I, I wanted to talk about ABC, blah, 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 blah. So you can do this. Google Sheets. Uh, now, uh, you know what? All this recipe, while it's cool and kind of makes sense, you can totally rebuild it. How? Simply by um, buy, 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 buy modifying the, the flow where you could scrape sales navigator research result, extract sales navigator company sales, find email, verify email. If email is verified, goes to cold email campaign. And after that, you can reuse this flow, which will be linked. So basically you are separating emails from all the LinkedIn related stuff. Why would you want to do this? Because the more activities you add before connection request, the more people you can process per day because you know that you have here a daily limit. So again, uh, using the email first and LinkedIn later approach, you can um, modify your copy or fit or, or like modify a copy to the condition that, I don't know, couldn't find your email first name. Can we connect here? I want to ask you something. And it's true, you couldn't find uh, that person's email, and that's why you are sending the connection request instead of something like, I don't know, like, hi, first name, I'm building my uh, network with people like you, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, so and Roman, can you, can you, sorry, Roman, can you, can you make me a host? I'm not able to turn on my videos. Something went wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. Oops. Oops. Um, yeah. Um, go ahead. So another case could be, I remember I had a client that told me, uh, I want to move like super fast. I like connection requests are slowing me down. I told him like, you have sales navigator, you can, um, target people that in your opinion will give you by titles that will give you more premium users so Roman, Roman, one, one thing one, one note sorry i think um uh there's a fire in my building i have to like move out you can continue the webinar i'll be back in some time okay let's maybe finish in in the next six minutes if you can or in even in one oh they, like the whole building <laughs> like forest forest getting out 
Um, then we you can continue. Nice it's device. fine. You are host. You can continue. I'll be back. I'll be back in some time. Okay. You okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Stay safe. Okay, guys. Vikesh is not here. Let's uh, continue. Um, yeah, I had a client that didn't want to use the connection request because it's kind of closed down. Um, so we use the approach to find emails and another way um, uh, in mail. Everything else, like all the other people who weren't premium, uh, didn't have valid email, they were recorded to a separate Google spreadsheet and then a VA uh, was supposed to manually try to find the email or connect them if these leads were, I don't know, decent to connect with. Again, it's just a different use case. Oh, and I remember that I can show you this one trick. Uh, if I remove this slice, have my first Spice, which is the CCP uh, lead, right? And in here, it should be, and it's correctly, it says fetch data from Google Sheets. What does it mean? I can have a Google spreadsheet where, where I have like first name, last name, company name, everything is clean. No, these in company, there are now these LTD, LLC, and other stuff email and everything else, I can schedule my recipe in the way that it will grab a certain amount of uh, rows, say 20, and it will run them through all of my entire recipe, which means that I, like, I can simplify everything by removing the scraping stuff and others, and I can have a clean continuational lead list that I can fill on a regular basis with fresh leads and every day that I schedule it, it will take these 20 rows of data and just run it through my, my flow. This is very cool because if you do this approach, if your lead input is a Google spreadsheet, you can add there a custom column called it icebreaker and to say, let's do it. Uh, local and now because the data is taken from here it could be my first name and then go personalization which means that you can uh, make every of your first connection email email very personalized because all the data will be taken from the google spreadsheet I haven't seen an app that can dynamically work like, like this way to kind of automate everything with personalization included. So this is very, very handy. Uh, what else? Additionally, I want you, like I said in the very beginning of the webinar, don't do this. I heard from text of support that there are cases where people just don't understand what they are building. What I mean is, for example, you, you, you don't know how to use it. It happens. You don't want to read uh, countless number of pages and documents, et cetera, et cetera. So um, you scrape some data, lead search results, right? And then because you don't have experience with this platform, you're trying to do something like, oh, I'm gonna message him on Facebook or something like this, like find a, a Facebook profile, etc. It doesn't work like this. Like technically it can work, but you are making things complicated. If you want to do multi-social platform, I don't know, something, then bear in mind that it's hard because you have problem with session cookie, you must use no proxies because Facebook, like all other social platforms, they require you to use proxies. LinkedIn as well, but it's kind of allows you not, not to use it. So, I mean, it's not very strict to location changes. Facebook, yes, Twitter, very, Instagram as well. So 
do not do, do, do this. Do not like jump from from I don't know LinkedIn, Facebook, and then Google, and then I don't know YouTube. Like don't build super crazy things. When you build something, you know, um, go do a five minute break. Go back to the recipe, analyze what you built, uh, look, double check all the variables, uh, because uh, if you miss the 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 the, the, the like if you mistakenly uh, you have a let's say a copy someone wrote it for you and in here you uh, just copy paste it and the variable first name was without uh, double uh, how they call this like it's brackets so now it's a mistake like if you send this connection request with this variable first name it's an, it's an error uh, LinkedIn will probably detect you after, after the third try. So do not do this. Like every time you 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 want to launch a recipe, double check, triple check, make it I don't know error free. Uh, what else? What else can I tell you? No, don't spam people. Share some tips. Think what you build. Do it correctly. Once you build the recipe, then think about the copy because you will now have a visual uh, representation of your recipe and you will have a logical continuation of your messages. And uh, stay healthy. So uh, let's save some five minutes for the answers, for the questions. Oh, will you answer the questions in the QA? Probably I will, maybe in the Facebook group because my kids are also screaming outside. Uh, what is the best way to distribute the sending request tasks with multiple LinkedIn accounts? What is the best way to distribute the sending request tasks? Um, every LinkedIn account has its own limits, so they are all limited to the number that you set. It's, uh, if it's a free account, it's 20. If not, then it's 35. And, uh, how to distribute, you go to the, remember I showed you in the upper right corner, how you create an account inside, inside Texo and you set up a daily limit, set up a daily configuration for that account. So I hope this answer works. Can you paste the Boolean string in the Facebook group? Uh, I will, I will. Let me make a note for the answer there in Zoom, please. I will again in the Facebook group, uh, below the, or maybe I will create a new post. Do you use Nestle with text? Oh, yes, I do. Next time we'll personalize, but you can Google, you can find on YouTube, um, like type their text on Nestle and there was a webinar probably, I don't know, last, like a year ago or something with the use case, how to use both text and uh, Nestle. It's not a problem. Okay, guys, uh, thank you for staying here. I hope that everything was useful. Uh, do not make errors. Mm -hmm. And we have the cashier. Oh. Yes, I will answer in the Facebook group. Um, okay. Hi, Roman. Um, can, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, can you uh, make me host again? Sorry for yes, the. Yes, I for can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. And now you are a host. You are. Okay, great. Um, so where are we? Are we done with, with everything? We uh, are with done. I uh, just uh, been answering some questions and uh, they were in the Q&A uh, section, a couple of questions, but probably I will answer them. I don't know, right now or... Um, or yeah, I think phase. like we should, uh, yeah, we, should, we can answer these questions later. So guys, two, I, I, I'm planning of like two, doing two more webinars. Uh, one is going to be, you know, building like how you manage workflows um, on, in recipes, like how you build five, six steps and then push all the data to a Google sheet or somewhere else and use that to process like another recipe. That way you are like, you know, streamlining all your recipes and know how you basically create these plans, like big, big workflows and small, in small, small chunks. Um, and second workflow is I want to do is going to be like cross-platform where like if something is happening on Twitter, do this on LinkedIn. If something is happening on LinkedIn, do this on Facebook. And like this way we can, you know, create cross-platform automations. 
this is something that I want to do as well. Um, so yeah, let's wait, let's plan the, these two webinars. And uh, thank you, Roman, for um, your time. Uh, Vikesh, uh, I yeah. just happened to see the question and answer section, and Anita is yeah. very, very active, so I'm going to answer the questions. So could you talk about safety and automation on LinkedIn? Recently, I got a warning from LinkedIn about using automation. You got a warning because you over-limited. That's it. Remember, uh, well, like we told you, that start slowly and then um, rise the, 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 the number of actions per day. That's the only reason I can explain. Because in my experience using this, I don't know, for the last four or five years, I never got a warning. Never. None of my clients. And again, it's not the number, it's not a game number on how many you spend per day. Like, keep it lower, but consistently, whereas, I don't know, blast it and then hope not to get them. Uh, I have a mailing list of emails from events I did. What would you advise as some of the things I can do with visited text? So if you have emails, like if only emails, then uh, email them. If you have emails in LinkedIn, uh, create a recipe to uh, do the both email and LinkedIn. That's easy. I don't understand what text or what the problem sales navigator search on the eighth page. So the problem is that um, if you type just the uh, founder uh, title in the, in the search result, if you go deeper to the search result, let's say page 60, you will have something like, uh, I don't know, consultant, advisor, like not relevant people that you have selected. So for this reason, use Boolean, always. That's a kind of mistake. The, the deeper you go to your search result, the more blurrier your search or leads become. Right. That works will work if you have the 69 a month LinkedIn Pro plan, not the sales navigator. Actually, that's a question that I wanted to ask myself. That tax will support... Uh, no, no, it won't work. So sales navigator is totally different than like normal LinkedIn premium stuff. Um, so sales navigator requires sales navigator, which is I think eighty nine bucks per month, even you pay yearly or ninety nine dollars per month. Also, uh, does Texas support uh, the recruiter like or how does it call plan? Probably not. Oh no, not yet. We do not. Uh, we do not have support for LinkedIn recruiters. It should be available soon, but we don't have exact date yet. But right now, no support for LinkedIn uh, recruiters. Um. I'll take a couple of these questions. Um, in the variables, how are we supposed to know which variables work with sales navigator, but not the not played LinkedIn account? I can answer very simply. If you select this, it says, this spice itself, sales navigator, then you must add there as an input sales navigator related URLs. That's it. That's why in the, in the while I was building this, I, I added these regular descriptions of my uh, spice. Simple as that. Right. Right. Roman, Roman um, talks about having a second LinkedIn account. Uh, it's not that I have a second. You you may have a team, an SDR, a VA. Use it. Husband, wife, I don't know. Use everyone LinkedIn profile if there is if it makes sense and there is depending on the use case. Yeah. Should we Automated. not be doing this with your own LinkedIn accounts? Yes, and you, know, you can use your own LinkedIn account as well. Roman has been using his own LinkedIn account since quite some time, right? So um, it doesn't make any difference. You can use any account that you want. Um, you can also manage your all your contractors, clients, or yeah, your team members' account. All accounts are totally fine. And the last one, uh, how to make it error-free. Like I said, you build this, you check it, you double check it. Uh, then you can clone the recipe and uh, CSV upload the minimum requirement required field to run this spice as well for five people. It will take a lot of time to, to, to do this, but that's definitely an error free. The way I do this, I check my recipe probably three to four times every time. That's how I make it error free. Yeah. Okay, guys, Um, thank you for um, last question. Just last question, Remy's asking, is it possible to automate refreshing cookies in Cookie Manager? Not possible right now, really possible very soon. Uh, we'll talk about everything once, once we are getting quite close. Um, but yeah, cookie managers, once you store something in cookie, ideally it should not expire for at least three, four weeks until you, unless you like, you know, you're logging in your um, browser, you're switching home phones, devices, and all those things. Uh, if you change a device, LinkedIn will, you know, see that, okay, this guy's like trying to, you know, log in from somewhere else. Uh, something is quite, quite happening quite frequently, so they will log you out and you'll have to like log in again. That's when cookie will expire. 
other than that if you log in at one device and you are continuously using that device only then it should not be a problem for at least three four week or even more more than that don't use a lot of routes texas yeah. support doesn't like it i like it but if you use it then use it smart um, yeah i would say like keeping like two routes are like is are good is good enough if you want to add more routes um we don't have any problem with that but like just like if when you reach reach out to us it becomes you know very challenging to debug at each step and see what really going on and then look into the possible like problems routes um uh, i think someone just asked like what is the route it is just like the branch right that branching that you saw um we 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 like in technical terms we call it like a route or you can simply call it like branch there's also one technical nuance i didn't mention is when you schedule a recipe and let's say you select it to work it monday friday bear in mind that monday friday it will start scraping sending connection requests etc but down the road you have follow-ups all the follow-ups it may happen that they will be sent in the weekend because let's say the delay is four days and this force the last day is on uh, sunday or saturday it will send the follow-up on the day it's kind of something that maybe because you can like not don't do this on um on v2 but i don't know if if, if this is something quick to fix in v1 but it's not a big problem at all but something to 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 know like i'm, I'm just sharing my experience <clears throat> this is probably yeah. yeah i'll just um yeah whatever like all your feedback are noted and since you are like the person who is like always talking to our team as well i'm sure that like I can see Arman Arman watching this webinar, so he'll make sure that we are keeping all things in air. Uh, Bonjour, Arman. Yeah. Um. Uh, one thing that I would say is that, like, what Roman is doing, a lot of people can do it and make a lot of money. I just wanted to cover this last part because, like, Roman manages a couple of like accounts for clients and all that. So, and Roman is not just like a lone person who is like doing this. There are a lot of people who manage Texo accounts. If you search. If you go to like Fiverr or Upwork or any other profile on even LinkedIn, people have added their like you know they are like Texo users. They are like they know Texo very well. They are like kind of Texo ninja, Texo master, and all that, and they charge good money for that, right? Roman, so like, can people make money from Texo by managing clients? If you know your stuff and you are definitely confident in what you build, you can. But um, test before like. Don't type their text on Ninja and other stuff while it's, I don't know, sounds maybe professionally, but justify what you what you do. Like be confident in what you build. Make sure that it works and only then make an offer out of it. Don't right. like be skilled in something what you do. Like it's not about only about how to um how to build the recipe. I worked with probably 80 clients and every client is different every different some some want to scrape leads from other platform and then target them on linkedin some just want, like every client is different there is no ideal recipe for all of the clients right right one client wants to work more fast other wants to wants to a b test another has five uh, sdrs in his team he wants to do something another one got his account bent he wants to do something now uh, right. and he tells me you are smart you can do you can do i don't know magic trick another one says i want to do only personalized connection requests and follow-ups and everything and image personalization every client is different every so you need to know the possibilities of the platform to answer the client correctly or to tell him that it's doable or not mm. Expand yeah, is the sense. best, I might say, after watching the follow. No, of course not. Texo is the best. It's fine. I just um, um it's it's people's opinions. Um, we we and expand is like good too. It's, it's Stefan is good good friend. I wouldn't uh, no comments on expandy or uh, anything like that. But yeah, I know my kid is best. Texo is my my kid, and he is the best. So that's all I know. Um. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you, Webinar Roman, for um, um, all your insights, building that recipe, showing all how to do web hooks, how to do branching, how to add conditions, talking about Boolean filters, every single thing. One last thing, I will just leave it to you. Um, if you want people to connect you for anything related to like 
managing the account, doing some tech job stuff, or getting some paid consulting or anything like that, you can uh, mention your email or something. I'll just uh, add it in description for anyone anyone who wants to like connect with you on it. Okay. Uh, where should I add my email? Just send me that, and I'll include that in the description on on uh, on YouTube and on this like video on Facebook. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Uh, see you again probably next week when I'm doing one my third webinar on webinar listings. Uh, it will probably be on next week Friday. Okay. Till then, see you. Bye. Take care. Hey guys. Bye bye.